What do you think chat GPT is going to do for investing? Well, so, so I did experiment a little bit with that over our, over our last, um, last episode. And I, did you ask um, it to make some, some financial picks? questions? I'm oh, sorry. What did you ask it to make some picks? Uh, so, so I asked them actually, I wanted to pick some kind of obscure mutual funds. And, uh, the first thing it answered was, um, this is not to be used for investment advice. And it just, the first thing it said was basically your standard disclaimer. And right. then just kind of went through some facts on stuff. And I, I tried to just put in some different symbols and ask it some stock stuff. And, um, I guess I'd be somewhat relieved in the fact that it didn't actually offer any sort of investment advice um, and that it gave the the disclaimers. Um, I asked it what a 401k was, and the answer was was kind of so-so. Um, you could, uh, it basically said it's a place where you could put away your money and it, it grows tax deferred. And then when you take it out, it's taxable, which which is true, but it omits the omitted kind of the Roth part. Uh, which works the opposite. So you had to, again, prompt it and say, well, what about the Roth 401k? And then it gave a, a good answer to that. But um, I think I think there's potential there, just like every other industry, to ask it really, you know, sort of basic questions. Um, but you're going to get that, that you're going to get that factual answer and not the peripheral stuff, which which might factor in. So the intellectual um, piece, probably. Right. I mean, yeah. 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 Um, so. It is a, it is a bit verbose in the way that it it kind of regurgitates information or assembles information. Yeah, yeah, I, I gotta say overall, I was probably not as impressed as maybe some of the hype would would lead me to, and maybe that was just the subject matter. But um, I was not as impressed maybe as I thought I was going to be. So hmm. for what it's worth, how about you? When you asked us some stuff, what was your experience? So yeah, I I uh, I'm. I've been very impressed. Um, we, my marketing team has been playing with it, having it uh, draft some marketing copy for us. And we're finding it to be a pretty interesting, uh, interesting thing. Um, it, it is verbose. So when you ask it a question, it tends to be long winded. Okay. And you can manipulate that. You can say, give me the question in less than a hundred words. Right. And you, you can, and that's what I think is really fascinating about it is that you can speak to it in real speak. And yes, it's default response to you again, maybe verbose and maybe long winded, maybe off in it's in it's tact or it's, it's approach, but you can, you can, ask for a different angle if you if you frame your query um in a way you you can you can have it change its tone you can ask it you can ask it to re um kind of come in from different dialects and age ranges and you you, you could say explain 401 401ks uh, as if i were a five-year-old for example right. uh, or you could say explain a 401k to me as if i'm a seasoned investor and it would literally produce a different response. Mm -hmm. And that's to me really fascinating where you were, you know, we played with it, said, you know, and, and said, write me a blog post a uh, thousand words on the current state of cybersecurity. And it produced a meaningful output. Um, and what was interesting, um, I, I've, I've been talking to the, about chat GPT with a lot of people and some, some academics that, that and some friends who you know the luddites I, I you know god bless them but they just the fear monger you know, you know that 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 quick jump to fear anything that's new or un, un, uh, not understood yet yeah and um to me what i what it looks like is it's um you know even the written word to get to produce a thousand words <laughs> on anything <coughs> It, it's a laborious task. Mm -hmm. Even if you can write 60 words per minute or type 60 words per minute, it's a laborious task. Right. And this tool eliminates the task. So imagine you're a home builder, for example, and you have the intellectual, the, the, intel, the intellectual product is the knowledge of how to build the home. Right. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, I don't know if, if how much you know about framing. I don't know anything about framing, but there's rafters and there's gussets and there's eaves and there's rakes and there's angles and there's toenails and there's uh, sill plates and all these things, right? But you need to get the lumber off the truck over to the site. You know, chat GPT seems to me like the thing that gets the lumber to the site mm -hmm. and maybe even will hold the board up for you. But like the human is the person saying, you know, this is how much we need. I need it over here. Um, hold it here while I nail it in. You, you know what I mean? It's I don't know if I'm drawing a good enough metaphor on that, but um, the human and I, and honestly, I, I can see to the, to the point where I mean, this is 2022 which, you know, we're a quarter of the way through the, the new century, which kind of boggles the mind in a way too. But you can imagine like my kids, kids, which is just not that far. You know, they, you know, sure. one, if the technology is here, yes, the tool is going to replace human work. But so far, technology has not replaced humans. It's only augmented and made the, everybody's lives better. Everybody, I mean, that's the bold statement of the day. Everybody's lives has, has been made better from technology and development compared to the historical humans. Right. You, you know, I mean, even if you're living in a tent in Tent City in Los, Los Angeles, that is a, a nylon neoprene tent that is far more waterproof than the... <laughs> cow canvas that you would have put over a stick in the middle. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like it, it's, I know that's a, a bizarre uh, um, link, but yeah. um, the rising tide has lifted all the boats. Yes. There's still people, there's still the, the winners and the losers, but mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, anyways, I won't make the argument because I know it's a sensitive topic, but um, so, so I look at the chat GPT and it's like, you know, the, and I and I always use the 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 job. You know, they used to have gas lanterns in cities, and there used to be a light lantern. Like a guy would, uh, a, there was a there was a job where the guy would walk around city with like this uh, torch, and he would light every he or she would light the the street lights, right? And then and then come around and turn them off. You know, at the end of the day, and electricity eliminated his job, but with some retraining and there's always that disruption and yes, people are just uh, uncomfortable and there's loss that occurs. And that's, you know, I feel for all those people, but essentially the, 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 the body of humans retrains and pivots. And so I look at chat GPT and it's like, yeah, you know, the 80% of the words for the thousand word blog post no longer needs because i have a team of copywriters that i pay a lot of money to fill words on on a page and now i'm looking at them overnight saying your work output is expected to change mm -hmm. i mean that's that's that happened overnight sure right and and you hope that it lets them ultimately all this stuff you hope it makes the the routine mundane part of people's job um so that they can focus more on the creative stuff which is what you want to do the intellectual you know, in, the, in your home project. building example you know you might already have architecturally the house built in your brain but you might want to go to something like a chat gpt and say all right here's my architectural designs um do you have any suggestions you know something like that um and they and they might be able to come up with something a little better, a little more creative. But um, it doesn't mean you should ask Chat GPT, "How do I build a house?" and follow the instructions exactly. Um, not quite ready for that yet. Uh, although the programming stuff is is interesting. I don't know if you've seen any videos or, or asked it for any code. That stuff is actually pretty good. I think that might be the um, biggest advancement. Um, but do you, um, do yeah, you know? You, you, sorry, good. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the that's the whole idea is that it lets people focus on the more creative stuff. Like instead of saying, all right, I got to do this basic article for on what is a 401k, because the person writing it already knows what the 401k is. They're just filling out a paper to exactly you know, correct to deliver to 30 people in the room. So you want them to to be able to check that box and say it's done, get it and say, OK, what type of graphics can I use? What type of 
what's what's the better font? How do I better communicate this with the 30 people in the room? Exactly. How do I, better, how do I, mean, I turn this into a YouTube script? How do I do all these different things rather than hunting and pecking for a thousand exactly words. and and listen there's a big fear in academia that students are going to take a shortcut to to a degree with this i mean there there's reports that they they already sent chat gpt to college and he's a he or she's a really good c student mm -hmm. with, with without any manipulation of it of, of its output yeah and you know i think it i'm just Man, it frustrates me because it's it lacks the the creative. Uh, it lacks the, to be afraid of this to say students are going to take the take the shortcut through academia. Mm -hmm. I think is to just again, it's yeah, it's that's not that's lame. Well, I mean, think about it. It's like again, um, the it's like calculators. I mean, my God, like you get you know we give small children and you and children calculators and yes we teach them long division there will be the classes where you learn how to write a thousand word essay but once you've checked that box and say okay this is what a thousand word essay is we we ban we lock that skill into the annals of history and the knowledge base mm -hmm. and then we propel the the learner forward by saying produce a dissertation or an essay on this subject matter they may put it build use a calculator it's just a word calculator you know right. use the word yeah. calculator to spit the thousand words out but the yeah. product that the student is responsible for is the words themselves so the the and the framing of the message and the quality of the message and the 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 fact checking of the message i mean you could still get the the calculator to spit out a, 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 an answer but really the operator, it, in, uh, their operator's inputs it, are responsible for the quality of the output, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Garbage in, sure. garbage out. So and it's, and it's, it'll be a rise to the, the critical thinker or, the, uh, or the, the fact checker or that type of stuff to say, all right, I'm the one guy in the room that realized that that calculator spit out the wrong answer and here's why. You know, so it's gonna it's gonna trigger that in people to to sort of question things. Um, now, now, let me make another ad here. Are you familiar yeah. with the concept of the singularity? Uh, yeah. Walk me through it. So again, this is my totally. I don't I don't have any information. This is just going off my understanding of the singularity. It's when a it's when the conclusion of the total. Uh, I don't know if it's like biology merging with um technology or it's um i don't i don't even know what the singularity is in in, in a detailed description but I, I can ask Ch chat gpt actually let me just pull this up what is the singularity i'm gonna make a point so stay with me for a second all right i'm with you I don't know if I'm still alive. The singularity, and this is real time. I'm going to re read this. The singularity is a hypothetical future point in time at which technological growth will accelerate so rapidly that humanity will fundamentally change. That's just the first sentence. The thing is still is still reading on. So to me, this looks like and feels like some sort of entry point into the singularity. You know, like the technology. I mean, look at the last hundred years i you know you and i straddled the last hundred years right i mean your parents were born i would guess somewhere in the 20s or 30s right yeah um so and and so certainly your grandparents mm -hmm. remember outhouses and not everybody having electricity maybe or not certainly not everybody having two cars in the garage or a television in the house you, you know um so we are we are close enough to mo to kind of what feels like pre modern day, you know, well, like we we are close enough to pre modern day, and yet in the last hundred years, I would say even in the last seventy years, there's been this flywheel of technological growth, and I don't mean to be a fanboy about technology, but I am the technologist here that this tool overnight last week seems like the flywheel just spun a quite a bit faster you you, you know what i mean like even, yeah yeah i see what you're saying I yeah mean, I mean, even to the go ahead 
Yeah, it's a, it's each each incremental shift. So if you took the last hundred years and broke it down in in ten different decades, each decade on top of another accelerates technology faster than than the exactly one my point. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it when when you're living in it. You know, you say, "Wow, they they went from from Wright brothers to to landing on the moon in in sixty years," and it's like mind blowing that that could happen in somebody's lifetime. But that is you know, mind blowing. It is. It is. I mean, that is. Say, right, mind- well, what have we What have we done in the sixty years since we landed on the moon? You know, we've barely been back. We haven't. But it, but that's not that's not the case. We've had far more technological advances in the last fifty than the previous 50 or even the last five and the five before that. But it's just when you're living in it, it, it doesn't quite feel like and we it. And you and I have been living in it in what I would say modern, modern technological era. Mm-hmm. That's been our basically defined by our lives. You know, the transistor w- was invented or uh, popularized in our parents' lives. Mm-hmm. And for, the, for most of their lives, the transistor has been getting smaller and smaller. And the transistor could be analogous to a uh, uh, dentrite and synapse, uh, nerve ending in our brain. And this chat GPT is basically a, uh, what do they call it? A neural network of, uh, it's a, of, of, um, it's a speech network. You know what I mean? Right. Of, uh, of course I'm not smart enough to even articulate what I'm, what I'm trying to express, but it just feels like the flywheel towards the singularity just got an extra push, but a big one, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, uh, you know, even the code. So you mentioned the code, right? The, the, the software, the chat GPT can write programming language. Yeah. So yeah. you can ask for an output of in a, in a certain programming language and it will write a program for you. Again, the re- examples that are shown uh, on YouTube and in, in, the, in the news say that there's an asterisk there. You know, you still, it still requires the human to tweak and manipulate the the output you know control you know manipulate the inputs to get the out the, the desired output but yeah. again like i'm saying with the right the thousand word or two thousand word essay um it gets you 80 percent of the way there mm-hmm. you know so it's it's just it's you know it's just a, it's just a it's just fascinating um i don't mean to get overly excited about it but it, you know from from where i'm sitting my copywriter instead of producing one or two blogs a week, mm-hmm. it can now produce five a day. That is, that is real. Yeah. yeah. That is real. And that's, that happened overnight. Yeah. No, I, I could see that. Yeah. I mean, I've used some, some AI writing tools before, so I guess maybe it's not that huge a leap for me. And I think it sort of depends on your subject matter too. So just for fun, I put in what is Disney stock? Um, and the response I got is is fine, but it, it tells me nothing. So the first sentence is, Disney is a media entertainment company that is primarily known for film, television franchises, animated films, live action films, and television series. It's like, okay, that's good. Then the next sentence, Disney is a publicly traded company, which means it's owned by shareholders who hold, hold stock in the company. It's like, okay, that's okay. But that's a sentence they could push out for any publicly traded company. And then the rest of it is, you know, pretty formulaic. Uh, how about how about this? Ready? Smile. Yeah. Smile and look at the camera for a second. Nate, yeah. Nathan, uh, get ready for this. Okay. This is going to be a yeah. clean cut. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. This is a, this is a cut. I want to just I want to get this in. Yeah. Welcome to the to Finance and Technology Insights, a podcast dedicated to exploring the intersection of finance and technology. In each episode, we invite industry experts to share their insights and experiences on the latest trends and developments in the world of finance and technology. Our hosts, Brian Williams and Eric Bjorndorf, bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to the table, having worked in the financial and tech industries for many years. Join us. Join us as we delve into the exciting and ever-evolving world of fintech. Okay. All right. That's good. What was your input? Write me a quick opening to finance and technology insights by Brian Williams and Eric Bjorndorf. That was, and that was untouched. So obviously the, the context and the voice, but if I was a third party, yeah, you know, that would be completely accurate. If Nathan were to record that intro, that would have been completely accurate. Minus the, the guest piece. Although we've talked about having guests and maybe it's read that maybe it's doing a a voice to uh, uh, text. I don't know if our, 
if we're being uh, transcoded. Our, 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 is it yeah, our YouTube does it? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we've talked about having guests on, mm. you know? Yeah. 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 It's not bad. Definitely has its, definitely has its place. Um, how about, got, how about this? Right. Yeah. Good. Write me a quick opening for finance and technology insights by Brian Williams and Eric Burendorf from Eric's point of view. Spell technology wrong. Hang on. Let me just auto. Just, let me just spell check this here. Hi, my name is Eric Bjorndorf, and I'm one of the hosts of Finance and Technology Insights, a podcast dedicated to exploring the intersection of finance and technology. I have a background in both industries and am excited to share my insights and experience with our listeners. In each episode, we invite experts to join us and discuss the latest trends and developments in the world of fi fintech. Whether you're a finance professional looking to stay up to date on the latest in innovations or simply interested in how technology is transforming the financial world, our podcast is something for everyone. So join me and my co-host, co Brian Williams, as we delve into the exciting and constantly evolving world of finance and technology. There you go. That's something. That's a lot of overlap with the original one, though. So yeah, but I mean, in a vacuum, if that, you know, yeah. that. Yeah. Had I had that been my input, um, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, it's really cool, and 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 I guess maybe I'm 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 uh, starry eyed because I I've you know AI has been a buzzword for well, definitely for the last sixty years, but yeah, AI has ramped up in the last five to ten years as a like the the heat around AI has kind of heated up from a buzzword mm -hmm. standpoint. Yeah. And, and I really don't, um, I'm not an early adopter. Mm -hmm. I'm a technologist. I'm not a Luddite, but I'm not an early adopter. Does, does that well, what happens is a lot of these terms get overused and misapplied. And I remember like <clears throat> when everything was cloud, right? Remember when everything was exactly. in the cloud, and it used to just bug me. I'm like, yeah, you stored stuff on a remote server 30 years ago. Wow. Perfect How is that example. And everybody, everything was cloud. Everything was cloud. It's like. Um, 10 years ago, cloud was was oh hot, hot, God. hot. And I'm like, you guys, it's just the internet. The cloud yeah, just means the internet. I know. Yeah, um, perfect great. example. Yeah. Uh, so like, yeah, I, I remember, remember doing like FTP addresses like oh, on my dad's computer 30 years ago. Like that was cloud. Um but uh, yeah, so a bit, and then everything is like, you know, everything is AI, Every, anything that sort of helps you. It's like, okay, well, spell check on your, on your word is AI. I mean, that's just, so that, uh, yeah, I, I, the term does get, all these terms do get kind of overused because everybody wants to latch onto it. Cause it's like, but to my, to my point, I, I, I'm like the Apple of technologists, you know, Apple is never the first out, out of the gate. They wait for it to be refined or whatever. And then they jump, you know, then they enter the market with a solid product. Like that's how I, I view yeah. technology myself is AI. Well, let's talk about the cloud real quick. And I know we're running long. We'll, 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 we'll call it in a minute, but um, when the cloud 10 years ago was the hot buzzword, I wasn't hot on it because there there was no reusable, there was no real material value in that moment. As somebody was getting excitable about the term cloud, like how do we, Eric, how, you know, I'd had firm owners, you know, how do we get the cloud? How do we use the cloud? I'm like, yeah, you're already using the cloud. <laughs> you're, you're already, yeah. we are, your, your email is in the cloud. We, we remember we migrated your email off your, your, your own exchange server in your closet. And we put that up in, in, the, in, mm -hmm. in the cloud. So you're already using the cloud we're going to use these technologies as they're usable and beneficial to us. You know, now I'm making almost every single day. I feel like I'm telling some current or future client that cloud and web are two different things. And my, mm -hmm. we're all in on web software, mm -hmm. you know, so there's software now that, you know, I, I run my entire business now in a web browser. In fact, right. I was just talking to a, an attorney, um, trying to uh, train him on some of his, his systems and tools. And I was showing him how he can make a phone call using his office phone in his web browser and his mind blew. He's like, I don't yeah. understand. He, yeah. he, he literally said, I don't, he, and he was, 
I think the guy was 60, got to be in his 60s, like a real smart person, right? Mm -hmm. And I showed him I, how to make a phone call from his Ring Central browser plugin, and he just didn't understand. He's like, "How are you doing that?" I know. <laughs> and, I know and, it's crazy. You know, technology and stuff that we take for granted. And uh, probably said this before, but my wife yells at me all the time because I I assume that everybody knows everything. You know, and sometimes I'm like blown away when somebody knows like even the idea of just like clicking a phone number in your CRM and having the phone dial. Yeah, like, that's, that's what so I did. Cool. That's what I showed him. So it's like, how you know, crazy. Yeah, I'll probably do an, another uh, video on, on that uh, alone. But um, what was my what was my point? Um, yeah. So anyways, um, I am eager and excitable about this cop this uh, chat gbt and this is the last thing i'll say about it because it is it is free it is yeah. and it is now it is it is right, right. here anybody can down, go to chat.openai.com create a free account and okay. start playing with this and i remember when chat gpt came out like six months ago, they had a previous version. I guess this is chat GPT version three or something. And yeah. I did take a quick peek at it a couple versions ago. I think maybe even you and I covered it uh, briefly. And uh, it was, it was, uh, I was nonplussed. Let's just say that, uh -huh. that you know, um, but um, it's sitting right here in front of me. Like I can ask it anything. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I guess it depends on the on the input and what you're looking for. This is this is just kind of comical. And I'll close out with this because it's ten. And uh, so as of December twenty uh, December twentieth two thousand twenty twenty two, the current stock price for Disney is dollar sign x x x dot x x per share. So it doesn't <laughs> want to give what it, what it, it doesn't want to give you the uh, the value probably right. Yeah. And then it says, it's important to note that the stock market can be volatile and the value of an individual stock may fluctuate significantly over time. If you're considering investing in Disney or any other company, it is recommended that you consult with a financial advisor and carefully research the company before making an investment decision. It's like, okay. Well, so what I need to get, do is like ask it about five or six different stocks and see if it's the same response for because 90 percent of what they gave me for disney could be used for every stock obviously um so that'll be uh, i'll at some point play around with that but um but we'll see see how that uh i just evolves. asked it what is cnbc reporting as disney's current stock price at this time and uh, the first sentence i'm sorry but i'm able to give you real-time information on stocks my knowledge was compiled prior to september 2021 mm. so that's interesting yeah, yeah. All right. Well, hey, we'll talk more about I think this might be uh, there might be more meat on this bone because I I'm you know, this isn't the last I'm, I'm going to talk about it for sure. Yeah. And, and I know we're running long. So uh, great show, buddy. We'll see you next week. All right. Sounds good.